The Merseyside region is home to two big Premier League clubs. One has been constantly achieving success winning Premier Leagues and Champions League, while the other has been enduring relegation battles. Everton fans, I know life has been difficult, but not for long as I'm stepping into the shoes of the Everton manager because Merseyside has been red for far too long. It's time to paint it blue by making Everton a bigger club than Liverpool. Okay guys, we've taken on this job without really figuring out how on earth we're gonna make Everton bigger than Liverpool. Liverpool have way more money and hence the quality of players they've got. It's it's really not comparable. I mean, just, just look at our squad. We've got Decore in the team. No disrespect, but Liverpool have got McAllister, a World Cup winner. We've got Harrison on the right and they've got Mo Salah. Tarkowski versus VVD. Like this, this is a no contest. And in terms of money, we're basically a broke club as well please compared to them just 40 million in the bank but you know what if we have a defeatist mindset like this we're probably not going to nope. make everton a bigger club we need to i guess take things small and i think our first goal needs to be to get everton out of this relegation mess and get us finishing in the top six get back in the conversation at least because we can only compete and be better than liverpool if we can hold our own against them all right guys first let's figure out this squad and what it needs you know what for the players we've got you know, James Garner, Onana, a couple of really talented CDMs. I think a 4-2-3-1 wide formation would really work. Puts McNeil and Harrison in perfect positions too. Keeps us defensively solid. But yeah, I don't think I'm about to play Deli Ali as our cam. I think for the first season, we need to just bring in maybe a cam that we can build this team around. We've got a bit of talent in other positions like McNeil, Onana, of course, Patterson at the back too. But we literally don't have a cam. Let's see what we can get in 40 million. Okay, guys, I think I found the cam that would literally be perfect for our team. Eberechi Eze plays for Crystal Palace, 25 years old. At this point of time, this is the maximum quality I think we can afford. And even still, it's going to be a tough buy. We're going to have to negotiate quite a bit. All right, first signing in the new era of Everton. Let's see how much this ends up costing us. I'm going to start with 30 million. I know that's actually worked. This was a lot simpler than I thought. I kind of feel like we've overpaid for Eze. We could have got him for a bit cheaper, but to be fair, He's the man we want, 40,000 per week, and we've got him. That's the first signing we're making for Everton in this new era. But probably the only signing we'll make this season because we've got just 9 million left. I guess we'll spend the rest of the cash hiring scouts. But yep, that's what our team's gonna look like for the first season. I'm just hoping Eze signing is enough to keep us out of a relegation battle. All right, guys, I've got my first ever Merseyside derby. I think this will give us a really good idea of how far behind we're of this Liverpool team. Okay, I'm, I'm freaking nervous for this man. Let's see what happens. And oh, painful. Absolutely painful. They destroyed us. I can't lie, guys. Making Everton a bigger club than Liverpool, it's going to be a grind. End of the season and at least we're not in the mix for relegation. And we finished above Chelsea. Okay, this is looking good. We're in the top half. No way. What? Sixth in the Premier League? I was not expecting that. Honestly, I think it's because we've got Jordan Pickford who probably carried with that 84 overall. And yo, looks like new signing Eze has been brilliant. Oh, I was not expecting that. This is the best feeling in career mode, man, when you make a signing and he delivers right away. There's also been some solid growth in the youngsters. I kid you not, if we get the backing like Liverpool does, I reckon we can build somewhat of a competitive team to at least take the fight to them. Kicking off season two, and I think we're in a lot better of a situation I thought we would be in. Pretty sure we've qualified for either the Europa League or the Conference League. That's going to give us a lot of experience. But this team that we're building is, is actually already half decent. Eze in that camp spot is looking really good. Brantwaite is another one I'm looking forward to seeing how he grows. Onana oh, too. This season though, if you noticed, I think Harrison's gone back to his parent club leads. We need a new right-sided player. And we could maybe do with another centre-back too. The problem is our budget was only marginally increased from last season. 46 million. That's what we're competing with, man. Liverpool probably have 200 million to make whatever signings they want. We're stuck with this. Okay, let's not complain. Let's firstly get ourselves a right midfielder. And I'm interested in a Man City player. Okay, let's just ignore his hairstyle. Oh my god. 
What is that? Bian Cortu, a Brazilian right midfielder, honestly would be perfect. He's also a bit defensive minded. And for a club like Everton, we need that aspect of the game too from our wingers. And you know, there's something I like more than anything. Contract expiring in 11 months. We could get a good deal on this. Bro, if we can get him for 20 mil, I reckon we could also sign a new center back this season. That would be crazy. And yup, this is going to be an amazing deal for us. We're about to fraud Pep Guardiola for selling a promising 22 year old for just 20 mil okay maybe 21 but now let's negotiate this down i don't think pep really cares about jan kuto we could get this deal done and there you go i don't think i've ever signed jan kuto before so i'm really excited to see how he gets along we've now got 22 million to bring in a center back and clearly that's not enough but if I sell someone like Tarkowski, we could get like 10 million from it. I'm also down to sell Michael Keane. Players like Seamus Coleman, Ashley Young, doubt we'll get too much money from them. But they can go. And yup, the massive club clear out begins. Roughly 25 million was the amount we were able to generate. And look at that, boys. 48 million. Now we can get a good centre-back partner for Brantwain. And I think I found a really good option. Usman Diomande, 20-year-old centre-back. Playing in the Portuguese league, I think he could do with a nice upgrade to the Premier League. The good news is he fits our budget and we've got him at the club. Our team just looks so much more balanced now. We've gotten rid of the older players, brought in youngsters, and it actually looks competitive. I'm curious to see if we can make a push for top four. I don't know if that's expecting too much. Okay, first up is an opportunity for us to test ourselves against Liverpool. Last season, they beat us easily. This season, the team's slightly better and I think we should be able to put up a fight. And there you go, a draw against Liverpool. Now, that's what I call progress, especially at Anfield. Now, I'm curious to see if we're on the same level as Liverpool and we can maybe finish top four. Oh, it's even worse than last season, eighth in the Premier League. That's the thing with Liverpool. If I remember, even in real life, a few seasons, they were able to break into the top six, but they've never been able to go beyond that. And that's where we're struggling currently. Oh, but also this season was painful because in the FA Cup, knocked out by Liverpool 4-0, we're clearly not on the same level. Now, we were in the Europa League this season, topping our group, but Inter kicked us right back out. I'm wondering what went wrong this season. Because, I mean, look at Eze. He's going beyond his potential, up to an 87 overall. And once again, he's had a solid season, along with McNeil and even Beto. Kuto is well up to an 84. Doesn't look like our attack is that much of a problem. Maybe at the back is where we're lacking. And to be fair, Beto's stats aren't anything extraordinary. If we want to really compete against Liverpool, break in the top four. We need investment. Simple as that. Oh, but for season three, our budget's even worse. 42 million. I kind of expected this since we've gone backwards. That's the thing about being like a mid-table or a low-level Premier League club. To break into that top four, you need money, but you don't get money until you break into the top four. Well, let's just try and do our best with this 42 million. I think getting a left back has to be priority because Mikolenko, he looks kind of like the weak link of this team. Hey, this is a very interesting one. Levi Colville, who's now converted himself into a left back, somehow plays for Barcelona, but if we can sign him, could be very interesting indeed. Okay, why am I negotiating with Xavi in his full kit? Is he considering coming out of retirement? But anyways, we've made the signing of Levi Colville, but it's almost cost us our entire transfer budget. Just 7 million left? I don't think we're signing anyone else. But at least we've got pretty much our entire team above the 80 overall. Ah, but I really wanted to get a better striker than Beto but we just don't have the cash. We're spending the remainder of our money just getting better coaches. Maybe that helps us in growth. I think that's what we need to just improve our players and maybe that way we can make a push for top four. No freaking way, guys. Another season and we're just getting worse. We're now ninth in the Premier League, nowhere near Liverpool. Nah, this is simply unacceptable. I'm just trying to figure out what went wrong because player growth this season has been outrageously good. Jan Kudo is 88 rated. Is 90 rated. He's one of the best players in his position. Dwight McNeil is improved. So has James Garner. Three seasons in and we've improved our team so much, but it still feels like we're a galaxy away from Liverpool. By the way, guys, over 70% of you guys watching have not subscribed to my channel and that makes me sad. So if you guys can subscribe, it would really make my day. Season four with Everton and our budget just keeps getting lower and lower. It's because of our own performances, but Bruh. 39 million, ah, it's going to be tough. But I think I've 
figured out the problem, and it's not really our first team, but the fact that we've barely got any sort of decent backup. Literally, a 76 rated Gomez as our backup CDM. That That's just sad. Nobody else in the midfield, really. No backup winger altogether. I think all of that is what's holding us back. And this season, we're going to be smart with our signings and bring in quality squad players. I literally never use the global transfer network, but it's literally just found me Matteo Prati, an Italian CDM. He's the kind of player on the bench could have a big impact. 30 million and we've got him. That instantly makes our bench somewhat better, but we desperately need a winger too. And we've again got just 6 million. Hang on, we don't need four strikers in the club. Both Neil Moppe and Calvert-Lewin are 29. And you know what that means? They're both gone. Now at least we've got some money to work with. And I found a really good option for the bench. Jack Clark, 25 years old, 80 rated. And that is just the player we needed. We literally ended up using every bit of cash we had left. But now our squad feels the most balanced it's ever been. If there's any sort of injury, we've got options at least. We've now got our strongest ever Everton team. Can we finally take the fight to Liverpool? This is now our fourth season and we're yet to get a good result against Liverpool. I mean, we got a draw, but that's about it. The team's better than ever. I trust them. Can we finally beat Liverpool? Yes, we can! Four seasons in and we've actually pulled it off. That is incredible. But that result alone isn't going to make us better than Liverpool. We're going to have to try and finish above them in the league. End of the season and I think we're finally about to see some progress. Yes, we are. No way we finished above Liverpool. Heard in the Premier League, we finished four points above Liverpool. At least some bragging rights for Everton. Oh boy, four seasons in and we're finally seeing the hard work pay off. And we're also bringing silverware back to Everton, the FA Cup. Ah, oh, but we lost the Carabao Cup final, but that's fine. Next season, we're going to be in the Champions League and Liverpool aren't. That itself kind of makes us a bigger club than Liverpool. But the truth is, until we win the Premier League, until we win the Champions League, I don't think we can paint Merseyside blue. We're now in our fifth season with Everton and just look at how good this team looks. James Garner's 89 rated, Eze's 92, Kudo 90. I'm not saying we're already bigger than Liverpool, but I think we've built a team that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. But yes, I think it's time we start dreaming about winning the Premier League because I think we've got everything except maybe some more firepower in the attack because Beto, I'm not too sure if he's him. That's the only department where I'm a bit iffy. If we can get a better striker, that could change everything. And we do have 133 million because of course we've made it to the Champions League. It's time to take this Everton team to the next level. Do you know what? For the last decade, Liverpool have had an African be their leader, their superstar. I'm talking about Mo Salah. And I feel if we want to be regarded above Liverpool, we need a player of that kind of caliber, a superstar. And I don't mind signing another African, Victor Ossiman. Bro would legit change the face of our team, instantly make us contenders for everything. I think this is what we need. Oh boy, it's going to be difficult to pull it off. Our budget's clearly not enough, but if I can pull off a swap dealio with Beto, this would be utterly ridiculous. Let's try 75 million plus Beto for Victor Osimhen. Is that going to work? Well, it might, but we're going to have to up the cash. And you know what? I can definitely go up to 80 million. Is that going to work? Yes, it is. We've literally got Victor Osimhen in the building. Let's make him a highest paid player and close this deal. Is he going to accept it? And I think he has. This is a statement signing for Everton. One of the world's best strikers joining us. We're finally starting to show that Merseyside is blue. But you know what? Let's calm down. We've built a superstar team, but we haven't won either the Premier League or the Champions. Champions League yet. But this season, let's try and change that. All right, guys, we've made it to the end of January. And look at that. The team looks better than ever. Solid growth all round. James Garner is 90 rated. Who would have thought he'd become one of the best CDMs in the game? I expected Onana to become better than him. But yup, the team is good. Ah, oh, but we're still six points off Arsenal in the Premier League and two points off Liverpool. I genuinely think this team is good enough to finally be better than Liverpool and win the Premier League. But we're going to need a bit of luck for the remainder of the season. Don't forget that we're also in the Champions League this season and we've topped our group
group unbeaten as well? I think balancing two competitions, we're reaching the limits of this squad. This is the big game, guys. If we can show that we can beat Liverpool in a clutch Premier League game, that's when I think we can say that we're officially better than them. Can we get a result here? Yes, we can. And look at that. It's put us right back into the mix for the title. Let's get through the rest of the season and see if we can get the job done. All right, guys, we've made it to the end. And yes, we finished above Liverpool and above Man City. But have we done enough to win the league? And yes, we have. By two points, Merseyside can officially be called blue. I'm not surprised we've won the league because this team that we've built is just crazy. I mean, how on earth has Eze become this good? 33 goals from him. Even Ossiman couldn't outscore him. McNeil as well. It's almost like every signing we made had a purpose and they've all done their jobs. But there's still one thing left for us to do to make Everton a bigger club than Liverpool. Winning the Champions League. And well, we've knocked out Napoli in the round of 16. And PSG. Okay, this is huge. No way we've knocked out Real Madrid. We've made it to the finals against Barcelona. Yo! Even Liverpool in their recent history couldn't win both the Premier League and the Champions League in the same season. And we could actually do that. Okay, we might literally concede in the first five minutes. I can't believe this. I was excited to play with this Everton team, but now I'm not sure because Barcelona are cooking us. But okay, that was just a one-off mistake we've made. I still believe in this team. We've got some ballers everywhere. But they've got Lamine Yamal and look at his control and passing. Whoa, that was that was actually unreal, but we avoided conceding there. We've got Ossiman up top. We need to use his ridiculous space. There he goes. Victor Ossiman. Tough oh. angle. Oh, he's managed to get it off, but the keeper with the save. No, we can't get cooked like that. Lamine Yamal nope. is so good, but so is Jared Brantwith. Okay, this is our chance. We need to get the ball to Eze. There he goes. 93 rated. Let's see what Eze can do. And of course, he gets us back in it. I'm not surprised. We've developed him into a superstar. Okay, let's not let them score big save from Pickford. Bro, Lamine Yamal is crazy good. Please, can we not concede? We've just... Ah, uh, that is so frustrating. Okay, Dwight McNeil has just walked through the defense there. Still McNeil, tough angle. We need to make the most of these chances. Second off is about to kick off, and I think we're going to need something special. Oh, go on, Eze. We've broken through. He's got to make the most of this. Eze is carrying us. At least we're finally back in this. 20 minutes to possibly get a winner. Oh, Dwight McNeil has just broken through everyone. How did he do that? Barcelona committed everyone forward. I'm going to sweat this. I had to, and Eze scores. Let's go. I feel so sweaty for doing this, but I just clocked. Eze has scored a hat trick. No, no, no. We're not throwing this away. Pickford, big save. We just need to hang on for five minutes, but it's proven to be a difficult challenge. And it's done. Full diamond. We've beaten Barcelona. And the mission that we started five seasons ago of making Everton bigger than Liverpool, painting Merseyside blue, is complete. We've just made Everton champions of Europe. And if you enjoyed this journey, I'm sure you'll enjoy the brand new Chelsea career mode we're starting on my second channel. Watch the first episode now.